All right, so we got a walk-in uh, cooler not working. They were advised it might be the compressor. My coworker came out to kind of look at it over. He said it owned out fine. And I'm just here to verify uh, this area is really hot. He's still uh, recovering from his sickness. He's short of breath, all that. So I came to take over. And just looking around, one of these has a leak issue. Kind of just be aware of your surroundings. He said he left all the panels off for me to check. So we're gonna see, first of all, it might just be an electrical issue, but if we plug in the unit, nothing at all happens. So if my fan comes on and not the compressor, then we have an issue with the compressor, but since the fan's not coming on, we're not getting power to the condensing unit. So this goes over there. And we're gonna dive into that. We are getting a green light there, so. Let me also double check with what's in here. Let's see what we're working with. So we have fans and we have a limit over there, a high limit. All right, so this is set up like a freezer, but it's uh, cooler. And so they have fruit, veggies, and uh, beer down there. All right, so Pressure control, ohms out fine. Uh, high pressure, low pressure is fine. Our overload, fine. I thought that was gonna be blown. Considering how hot it is up here, this one's, these haven't been cleaned. So then, we have a little board here. I need to start checking for power. Uh, so this is a 208 system. So just for comparison, 208, but I'm not getting 208 over here. Damn it. Oh, it's gonna be hard to show, but if I check one leg, 20 volts. If I check the other leg, 120. So we're missing a leg there. All right, so before I get ahead, I'm gonna Make sure that our compressor is good. And not grounded, so make sure we get a good ground. And then just check the motor. Make sure nothing is screwing up our breaker. So the motor is going to be right here. Yeah, we don't have any grounds anywhere. I mean, it could still be bad, but uh, let's try and clean this up so we can 
take a look at the electrical a little further. All right, I kind of went through and just made sure I put everything back the way it was on the timer, close it up, make sure the time was right. Screwed all these back down, switches, uh, capacitors and all that. Have any, have any wire? Damn, it's hot up there uh, and dusty. I'm covered in dust. So that's the other thing. We're going to get a breaker for them, see how the unit runs. Uh, just us messing with it a little bit. Uh, we got the voltage to go through, and I was able to turn it on. Uh, but uh, my dad stopped by to help me out because it's a long distance to walk back and forth. And he said when I plugged it in, it was sparking at the breaker. So uh, we're going to replace it. He's the uh, electrician, so he wanted to uh, do that. Then once we get that going and we get the electrical uh, dealt with, I will plug it in. The compressor didn't sound great, but it should work. And then we'll have to check the uh, pressures and all that. And I told him that it's probably gonna be overheating quite a bit, which is gonna give us electrical issues. So. Uh, we're gonna recommend a cleaning. Uh, probably gonna blow it out and use a little bit of water and cleaner. Um, it is kind of outdoors, but it's in a small area. I don't wanna flood um, anything that could be, you know, a little dangerous. So just gonna try and use a little bit of water and flush it out with some nitro or compressed air or something. And just go from there, see if, if it works. If it works and it doesn't look great, we'll recommend the compressor, but at least, you know, we'll get it going for them. Had somebody just come in and put in a compressor, it wouldn't have worked. So we're taking care of the electrical first and then we'll get that done. Uh, and then after this, I have uh, some other calls. So we'll see if we get to those. Uh, it's already gonna be lunch. We'll see if the breaker works and it turns on and cools. We'll kind of leave it at that. Uh, for now, I recommend all the stuff that it needs. God damn, I am all dusty. Um, in case you didn't know on these uh, field piece probes, the one of the reasons that I bought these over the Testos, Testos could have changed it, but Testos turned on too easily in my bag because it was a tap to turn on. These are a hold to turn on. Also, if it's on and you double tap it, it turns red. That means it won't shut off whatsoever until you come in and physically hold it to turn it off that was really cool because when i'm using psychrometers and even like my pressure probes if i leave for any reason to my van or to take a break or something and then i want to check it wirelessly it sucked if it wasn't a hard to get area or if it was like you know raining or hot or something and uh, you just had to go back to the condenser to turn on your your probes that, that sucks so field piece has that uh they have an auto shut off but you can manually override it by double tapping 
when it's on, flashes red at you just to let you know, and it stays on until you turn it off. And the batteries are good, so I don't have an issue with that. Um, this location I'm not familiar with. My coworker, one of our guys, um, picked it up. So I'm gonna let it run because it's a beer cooler. They are, are stocking it up right now and going in and out. I think they felt it cold and they got, you know, excited and they're getting ready for the day because they're they're gonna they're about to open. Uh, they only open for lunch, so we had the morning to work on that. And I didn't get here super early. I got the call kind of late, so just finished. It's working fine. It could be low on charge slightly, but I wouldn't know until we clean the condenser and make sure uh, what our head pressure is going to be at. So right now I'm going to go get some parts, uh, try and get some other stuff done, and we'll see what comes up. Hey, all right, so just a quick update on those calls that I had in this video. I offered to go back for maintenance to clean those coils because they looked dustier than hell. And then they told me, you know what? We got our own maintenance guys guys that do that. So they were gonna clean them. Uh, I had a coworker go out and I think he had to replace an evaporator motor because they called us back that one of the motors just stopped working. The unit is cooling, but they are since they cleaned them, now they just want a quote on a new compressor because it's just sounding like really bad. So before it gives out, uh, we didn't find anything else really wrong with it. And that evap motor that I changed out on the second one, it's it has a beam bar uh, that goes across. It's one of those sensor mounted evaporators. I work on those a lot now. And I've been having to change out those ECM motors. I usually just put a rescue motor back in, which is also ECM, but they're universal. And instead of taking off, cause that whole bar runs across all five motors. I think this one had five. And a lot of them are like that. I used to work on some that have three, four, five, I think even up to six. I don't remember exactly, but if you don't want to take off the whole thing, that little Klein ratchet comes in handy and I just unscrew it from the mount on the back because you gotta, you gotta pull it down and uh, lay it on a, on a ladder or something. So those motors, that whole bottom panel with the motors and the grills will swing down if you take off two screws or three screws on one end because the other end has hinges. So if, it, if you lay it down, you need to lay it on, an, on a ladder or something because I, mistakenly left it hanging one time which was, it was fine but i had to do it twice because i didn't have the motor on me on the second time when i went back it snapped so luckily there was a i was alone so luckily one of the guys one of the workers uh from the store came in and he gave me a hand to put it or hold it up because i was holding one end and it was it was already like falling so I'll post some pictures of what I had to do. I had to use some uh, plumbing strap. I think that's what it's called. And I uh, kind of drilled back into it and made a hinge of my own. They get so cold and so they have a lot of condensation. They have a lot of water all around it. It just starts rusting out. So be careful with those. Do lay them on a, on a ladder. I've, I usually do that, but I just, for some reason I left it hanging and it started snapping from everywhere. Uh, on this one, I had my brother help me. He kind of helped me put a hand up because we didn't have a ladder on that one either. But you take it out from, or you take off the screws from the back, then you put it back together. And then when you take off the grill, it just comes out uh, with the grill. And then you kind of do it back the same way. You put it together or put the blade back on the new one. 
and then put it in the grill and then put the grill back on and then swing it down. And then from the back, you just put the motor back on the mount. Just a, a lazy, easy way that I change out those center mounted uh, evaporator motors. Cause I don't want to take off the whole thing, take off all the motors. I don't know if there's another way to do it. From what I understand, they're all interconnected and that's how you're supposed to get to them. But I do it this way. It's just easier and way faster. So we did, you know, the middle one and then you just run it back, wire it all together. Make sure you put it back the way it was from the old motor and then you're good. So that was easy, simple enough. We had a fun one with the breaker. My dad's actually, he used to be an electrician. So he handles that kind of stuff. Uh, once we found out that's what it was, cause us just touching it, it started passing power through and the unit came on, but then all of a sudden it started like arcing and stuff. So we changed it out for them and then it worked. Uh, I think there, um, I don't know if it was their maintenance guys or some guys before that couldn't figure it out, I guess, cause it was intermittent. So we got that going for them. And now uh, we might have to go back for the compressor. If I do the compressor, I am going to rinse out that with coil cleaner, that condenser, because I don't trust, no offense to any uh, maintenance guys, I just don't trust them around here. Uh, I always run into the same issue. They don't really clean. They don't really do stuff uh, properly or they say they do. And you know, it's just like where I'm from. Uh, no disrespect to any maintenance guys. If you do your job right or you're honest about your work, then that's great. So yeah, that was it guys. Uh, make sure to like, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff. Check out my merch. Check out the memberships on the channel. Appreciate all you guys for being here and I'll see you guys.